Hey everyone, Jason Franks with Games from Gaijin. I'm back to do my first review from the games that I brought back from Tokyo Game Market 2018 Spring Edition. Today we're going to be taking a look at Let's Make a Bus Route from designer and publisher Sashi and Sashi. You may know them from some of their very well received games, including the solo board game Coffee Roaster, as well as the very fun and stylized trick taking game Blend Coffee Lab. Let's Make a Bus Route is another new entry in the emerging genre of roll and write board games, although to be 100% technically accurate, Let's Make a Bus Route uses a deck of cards every turn, so this is really more of a flip and write game. I wanted to review this game first because I'm pretty sure it's my favorite game that I brought back from the convention, and hands down one of the best games I've picked up here in Japan. I think this game absolutely exemplifies everything amazing that's going on here in the Japanese board gaming community, and so I wanted to profile this game as soon as possible. Uh, it's two to five players. It only takes about 10 minutes to learn, 20 to 30 minutes to play. I think it's accessible for pretty much all ages. Um, it's got a great tactical feel to all of the components because you get to draw all over it, which I just think is an absolute blast. And so I think this is one you gotta get on your shelves as soon as you possibly can. Again, I wanna extend my thanks to Nice Games Shop for making this review video and my trip to Tokyo Game Market possible. Please check out the link in the description of this video if you want to see board games from Tokyo Game Market and all across Asia accessible for you guys out in Europe and the States at really affordable prices. Um, so again, thanks to Nice Games Shop. Let's take a look at Let's Make a Bus Route. I got a tripod mount for my iPad camera, so hopefully this new view helps with the rules explanation. I do want to point out that the game does come with English rules included, uh, and they are very good, very clear, no issues understanding any component or aspect of the game. All right, so let's start with setup. Here is the uh, communal game map. This is a wonderfully stylized street map of Kyoto. Every player is going to receive an individualized player board. The scoring is identical, but the colored movement correlations are different for every player board. And then there's the objective and turn board. So we're going to start the game by randomly selecting two of the objective cards. So We'll go with that one that just popped out and we'll do, say, this one here, okay? Then we set the rest of the objective cards aside and then we're going to shuffle up the five root bonus cards and deal one to each player. So I'll just deal myself one and leave it like so. And then we're going to take the turn cards, which also serve as the starting location card. So each player gets dealt two. So my two are starting locations numbers four and 12. So I can look at the map. I'm going to take my player color marker and my two choices are intersections four, which are right here, and 12, which is right here. So I'm gonna go with 12 to start my game. As you can see, every player is going to get a different colored marker, and you actually get to draw your bus route on the map. Uh, it's really high quality whiteboard laminate, so you just need a little bit of toilet paper, paper towel, and everything wipes right off. So like I said, I am going to start at intersection 12. Every player returns their cards. We shuffle them back up. 
and we're ready to start the game. So the premise behind the game is that there are going to be 12 cards drawn, one for each color corresponding to your player board, in which you will have to draw a new segment to your bus route corresponding to the color drawn. So 12 cards, 12 turns, and you're trying to pick up as many passengers and drop them off around the city to score the maximum number of points. So let's take a look at how a turn works and then we'll discuss how you score points. So the first turn, everybody would have to draw their purple segment. So my purple segment is two straight sections of my route. So let's say I'm gonna go north to start. I'm gonna pick up an elderly passenger. So I'm gonna mark that off on my player board. And then I'm going to finish a green light. I'll take this opportunity to explain what green lights do. Green lights give you one bonus move uh, before the end of your turn, and it can be in any direction. So I can continue north, I can turn right, or I can turn left. I am going to continue moving north and pick up this tourist. So I'm going to mark that off on my player board. All right, let's take a look at turn number two. So everybody else would have done their purple turn, then a red card would be drawn. My red turn is just a single segment, so I am going to travel to the university and mark off one university. We'll do one more turn just for fun. It's an orange segment, so I get two segments, but I have to make a turn in between them. So when you start your turn, you can start in any direction you want. So I can go east, west, or north, but then because an orange card was drawn, I have to turn after that first segment. So let's say I'm gonna go north first to pick up another tourist. Then, hmm, I think I'm gonna turn west to get to a green light so that I get another bonus move. And I'm gonna use that bonus move to move north and pick up a, uh, pick up a commuter. All right, so let's talk about how you score points. So moving over to the player board here, Taurus and commuters score points in similar fashion. Taurus, you're going to pick up building up to a maximum of four, at which point you need to drop them off at a temple or a Tory gate, as marked on the map. When you arrive at one of those locations, so let's say what I was able to pick up two tourists before I arrive at a temple or a Tory gate, at which point I would cash them in for five points. Now, if I were to pick up another tourist, I would start marking it off on the second row. So it's a balance between scoring the Taurus but building them up to score more points because obviously four Taurus for 14 points is a better trade-off than two Taurus for five points. But you're also trying to score points in other ways. So balancing when and how and if to drop off those Taurus is really complicated. Additionally, once you build up to four Taurus, you can't start a new row until you score that first row. So you do have to make sure to score them if you wanna keep picking up that type of passenger. Commuters function the same way, except they only build up to three and you drop them off at train stations marked by the blue squares with the railroad tracks on the map. Commuters also give you bonus passengers. So if you score four, or pardon me, if you score two commuters for four points, you would get a bonus elderly passenger. If you scored three commuters for six points, you would get a bonus elderly passenger and a bonus tourist to mark off on your player board. So commuters help you combo in other parts on your scoring board. Elderly passengers, since we mentioned them, no special effect here, nowhere you need to drop them off. Just every time you pick one up, you score progressively higher and higher amounts of points for your end of game score. Students are a little different in that students, you can have a maximum of six and you're trying to take them to universities, but they only score at the very end of the game. And it's simply the number of students you were able to pick up throughout the game multiplied by the number of universities you visited. So you can have a maximum student score of 24 points. 
There are three bonus categories for scoring points. You saw that we drew two objective cards at the start of the game. The two objective cards we drew were the pers first person to pick up five tourists and the first person to visit three Tory gates. If I'm able to pick up five tourists before any other player, I would score the full 10 points for objective number one. And then I would flip that objective card over to denote that anybody who picks up their fifth tourist after this point will still score a bonus point for objective one, but they will only score six bonus points. Likewise, the first person to visit three Tory gates will score 10 points for objective two, and every player thereafter, if they visit three Tory gates, will score six points for that objective. The last bonus is your route bonus, which is very important. It's definitely hard to win if you do not finish your route bonus. This is needing to visit the three intersections labeled on your route bonus card. So I drew CFI. I need to get my bus route to go through intersection C, intersection F, and intersection I in order to score my 10 point route bonus down here on my player board. So those are the five main ways to score points your tourists, your commuters, your students, your elderly passengers, and your two objectives and route bonus card. All right, so let's talk about a few of the pe peculiarities with moving. So let's take a look at the next movement card. It's green, which for me, I need to move in three straight segments. So looking at my board, the obvious choice would be to go west three segments, but let's say I actually want to go north instead. And I go one, two, oh no, I don't have room to go three segments, but I wanna use, well, I have to use my last movement if there's a legal way for me to go. All right, I'm going to go west. Now, because I deviated from the required shape for the green card drawn, I need to take a root deviation penalty. So any time you turn when you are supposed to go straight or go straight when you are supposed to turn, you're going to take a root deviation penalty. And you can take multiple of these on one turn. So for example, I drew a green card, which is three straight segments. If I had instead gone one segment, turned, one segment, turned, I would have had to take in two root deviation penalties on a single turn. And as you can see by the player board, you can only take five root deviation penalties in a game. So once you use that fifth one, not only have you taken a total of 10 points in penalties, but you can't deviate from the drawn cards anymore. Which means that if you go in a direction like I did here, where I couldn't have gone straight, if I had no more route deviation penalties available, I would have had to just waste a segment of my bus route, which is devastating considering that there are only 24 segments in the game. So if you're forfeiting one of those, you're giving a huge advantage to your opponents. The second movement uh, rule in this game is that once you visit an intersection, you can never return to that intersection. So for example, this Taurus down here, if I had instead up at the top of the map turned east and then on layer turns headed back south, I would not be able to take this segment because it would return me to an intersection I had already visited. So once you visit an intersection, that's it. You're never coming back to that intersection. So those are the two main movement rules for let's make a bus route. So let's talk about getting into traffic. All right, so let's say that, let's say that um, here, we'll erase a few segments from what I drew. Let's say that the red player started at intersection three and 
their first few turns looked like this. And my turn comes around as the black marker player. I go here and I decide ah, I really need to get up north. Maybe my root bonus objective had intersection B or A and I need to start heading that way. So I'm gonna go north and north like so. Because I drew a segment of my bus route where the red player already had drawn their bus route, because I did it on two sections of the street, I'm gonna mark off two sections on my traffic tracker. Now traffic is not inherently bad. You can fill this entire tracker and potentially suffer no ill effects. But at the end of the game, the player with the most traffic marked off on this tracker here is going to receive an end of game point penalty. So in a two player game, the player with the most traffic loses three points, three player game, four points, and in a four or five player game, the person who suffered the most traffic will lose five points at the end of the game. Now this can be a huge deal because the typical victory spread in this game is maybe two to five points. So you could be doing great, but that five point traffic penalty could be the difference between first and last place. Now in a four or five player game, it's extremely difficult to go the whole game without receiving any traffic. But if you do, there is a three point end of game bonus. So again, in a small victory point spread for most games, that three point bonus can be the difference between winning and losing. So definitely something that is worth taking account of as you progress through the game and near the end when you're forced into a few specific types of movements. All right, so that's really everything there is to let's make a bus route. You have your different passengers scoring points, your different objectives and uh, route bonuses scoring points, route deviation penalties, traffic penalties, a no traffic bonus, and then 12 turns in total, two of each color. And every player has a different uh, color chart here for what segment shape matches up with which color. So at the end of the game, if you have five people playing and people are drawing all over this map of Kyoto, it just looks so cool when the game is done and every game is so dynamic and so alive due to the nature of the flip and write mechanic for Let's Make a Bus Route. And it's definitely the thing that draws me to the game the most and the thing that I really get the most enjoyment out of every time I finish a game, win or lose. And like I said, super easy to teach, the rule book's great, uh, and it only takes 20, 30, 20 to 30 minutes to play. Um, so absolutely phenomenal little package we've got here. All right, so that was Sashi and Sashi's Let's Make a Bus Route. Again, super unique, super stylized, absolutely pinpoint perfection on the execution, really fun mechanic. This game just characterizes everything that I enjoy about Japanese board games. As you can see, it's a bit of a bigger box than your normal Japanese board game. Um, I think it's a little bit heavier just because of all the strategy required, but still very accessible to your family, friends, and significant others that maybe don't regularly play uh, heavier board games. Um, so yeah, that's my take on Let's Make a Bus Route. I am super stoked that I was able to pick up this game and I hope you guys are as excited to look into it as well. Till next time, I'm Jason Franks with Games for Gaijin.